Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today is my latest installment in my deep dive into the 2024 presidential election series. This video focuses on the Commonwealth of Virginia. Virginia is a very interesting state that for a long time was thought of as a very Republican state, a very solid Republican state. Then around the 2000s it started becoming more and more of a Republican, or more of a toss-up state, excuse me. And then around the 2008 and 2012 elections, it really started to pivot to being more of a swing state that was becoming a Democratic state. In the last two or three elections, Virginia has become more of a likely Democratic state, even in 2020 getting close to a solid Democratic state. In today's video, I'm going to go over some recent election results in Virginia, as well as some polling data and key counties to watch for for 2024. Looking at the Virginia president election voting history, in 2020, Joe Biden won the state of Virginia by 10.1%. In 2016, Hillary Clinton won the state by 5.3%. And in 2012, it was won by Barack Obama by 3.9%. So you would expect, based on these results, that it would be more likely than not the Democratic trend would continue and Harris would be leading here by a lot more than 10.1%. However, the current polling only shows Harris having a six-point lead over Donald Trump in the state of Virginia. And there is a bit of optimism on the Republican side on Republicans trying to win Virginia, due in large part to the fact that Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin, who got elected in 2021, brought a wave of optimism for the GOP in Virginia. Will that lead to a victory on election night? That remains to be seen, but that is one of the main reasons for optimism on the Republican side. Looking at the national vote now, in 2020, the, uh, Joe Biden, the Democratic nominee then, won the popular vote by 4.4%. Hillary Clinton won it in 2016 by 2.1%. In 2012, Barack Obama won it by 3.9%, leading to an average across the three elections of 3.5%. Right now, in the head-to-head -head polling between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris, Harris leads Trump by just 0.9% of the vote. So not only is it very, very close, it's also cut, overcut in half what 2016's was for Hillary Clinton, where Hillary Clinton won the popular vote but lost the Electoral College. Kamala Harris's current polling number is even less than half of that, which certainly would show that Donald Trump is likely favored to win the Electoral College if it stays at 0.9%. Of course, we still have two weeks to go to the election, so we're not going to know until election day, but that's certainly not the best news for the Harris and the Democrats. But looking at the state of Virginia itself and how it votes, in 2020, Virginia voted 5.7% more Democratic than the popular vote of the United States. In 2016, Virginia voted 3.2% more Democratic than the popular vote of the United States. And in 2012, very, very interestingly, 2012, Virginia voted the exact same margin of victory as the popular vote, which that was really fascinating to see going through this state. All, and that leads to an average across the last three elections of about Democrat plus three. So if it was Democrat plus three, based on what I showed you with the polls and such, that would mean that Harris would only win the state of Virginia by 3.9%. I do think that's a little bit low. I think she'll probably win Virginia by bigger than 3.9, but that's very, very interesting. If she wins it by 5.7, which is what it was in 2020, well, then that would be Democrat plus 6.6. .6. I think it's more likely to be that number than Democrat plus 3, but as always with elections, we never really know until the votes are counted. Now, looking at some presidential forecasts for the state of Virginia, Real Clear Politics has Virginia listed as likely for Kamala Harris. Sabados Crystal Ball does as well, as does 538 and Decision Desk HQ in the Hill and Cook Political Report. Complete agreement across multiple forecasters, Virginia is a likely Harris state. Some key counties I want to go over in the state of Virginia. There's definitely a bunch I could have choose from, but I had to talk about the northern Virginia suburbs right outside of D.C., Fairfax, Loudoun, and Prince William. These three counties have been absolutely critical in the Democrats' um, governance and really taking over electorally of Virginia. The Democratic growth in these counties has been huge. For instance, starting in Fairfax in 2012, it was won by Barack Obama by 20.5%. In 2016, it was won by Clinton by 35.8%. And in 2020, it was won by Biden by 41.8%. Looking from 2012 to 2020, that's over a 21-point gain just in, what, three election cycles in eight years? That is a massive gain for a county, especially a county like Fairfax that has so many people living in it. In 2020, Joe Biden got about 419,000 votes just in Fairfax County. And Joe Biden got 2.4 million votes statewide. 
So just so four hundred thousand of his two point four million came out of Fairfax, a huge number. Loudoun County now as well. In twenty twelve, it was won by Barack Obama by four point five percent. Twenty sixteen, it was won by Clinton by sixteen point eight percent. In twenty twenty, it was won by Joe Biden by twenty five percent. Over a twenty one point jump from twenty twelve to twenty twenty in Loudoun County as well. In Loudoun County, Biden had over one hundred thirty eight thousand votes casted for him in 2020. Not as large as Fairfax, still a very significant number. And in Prince William, similar to Loudoun, it was 16 points in 2012, 21 points in 2016, 27 points in 2020, over 140,000 votes casted for Biden in 2020. A very big Democratic basket of votes coming out of this one county. And when you add all these up, you have 140,000, 140,000, and over 400,000 that's almost a million votes, or a little over a million votes, just from these three counties. Very, very important and critical for the Democrats' success in Virginia. However, there are some other parts of Virginia that are also very, very key, especially in a close election. One of these counties is Chesterfield County, which is a suburb right outside of Richmond. In 2012, Mitt Romney won this county by 7.7%. In 2016, Donald Trump won this county by 2.3%. And then in 2020, it was won by Joe Biden by 6.7%. This one will be very interesting to watch for in 2024 in that we the polls suggest Virginia will be closer than it was in 2020. This county, Chesterfield, could be a good sign at how close the election really is. If this county is going for Donald Trump again, that would show that it likely is a much closer election and Virginia could potentially even be in play. It's a similar story also in Virginia Beach, where in 2012, it was won by Mitt Romney by 2.5%. It was then won by Donald Trump in 2016 by 3.5%, and then was won by Joe Biden in 2020 by 5.4%. These are two very, very close counties that, in the governor's election for Glenn Youngkin, Youngkin won these counties. So if it does happen where the election is very close on election night, these counties being won by Trump would be a pretty good sign that, yes, it is going to be a competitive election in Virginia. How competitive? That remains to be seen, but if these counties are red, that would be a pretty good sign. Looking at the key county map for the state of Virginia, the counties that I showed you uh, earlier are brought out in the yellow outline of a box to show you where in the state they are. Starting up north near D.C., where Loudoun County was 61.5 to 36.5 for Trump, Biden won that county with the 61.5. Fairfax, Biden had 69.9 to 28 for Trump, Biden won there. Prince William, 62.6, 35.6, a win for Biden. Looking at the city of Richmond as well, Richmond's going to be right over here, just north of Chesterfield County. Richmond was 82.9 to 14.9, massive win for Biden. Chesterfield, the suburb right outside of Richmond, 52.4, 45.8, a win for Biden. Norfolk is going to be right down here, right near Virginia Beach, 71.6 to 26.1, a win for Biden. Virginia Beach right here on the eastern edge of Virginia, 51.6. For Joe Biden, 46.2 for Donald Trump. In 2020, Joe Biden won the state of Virginia at 54.1% to Trump's 44%. A 10.1% margin of victory and one of the largest we've seen in the state of Virginia in a very long time. Now we're going to go to 2016, where it was Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. And Hillary Clinton got 49.8% of the vote statewide. Donald Trump got 44.4% of the vote. So he actually only went down 0.4%. From 2016 to 2020. However, Biden was able to get 5% almost more than what Hillary Clinton got in 2016. And you'll see throughout the state a lot more red in some of the key areas I was talking about as well. And also in the margins. Loudoun County, Fairfax County, and Prince William County all were less blue than they were in 2020, as was Virginia Beach and Chesterfield, which actually voted for Donald Trump in this election. In these areas, Loudoun County was 55.1 to 38.2, a win for Clinton. Fairfax was 64.4 to 28.6, a win for Clinton. Prince William was 57.6, 36.5, a win for Clinton. Richmond, 78.5, 15% uh, for Clinton, for Trump. And that was about a three-point deficit or loss from what it was in 2020. So Biden gained three points in Richmond going into 2020. Chesterfield County was 48.2 to 45.9. That was a Trump win in 2016. And Norfolk was 68.4, 25.9, obviously a Clinton win. Virginia Beach was 48.3 to 44.8, a win for Trump right here in this county. A lot more red throughout the middle part of Virginia. However, the northern D.C. suburbs 
absolutely critical voter turnout in these areas that really made it hard for Trump to catch up in this election. It is also worth noting the Democratic Senator Tim Kaine was Hillary Clinton's running mate, so that likely led to a little bit of a boost in the state of Virginia as well. But Red Virginia Beach, Red Chesterfield, look at some of the likely Republican areas in Nelson, Rockingham, or Buckingham, excuse me, Cumberland and Fluvanna, very, very important. Mecklenburg right here as well. And you have Caroline, Spot, uh, Spotsylvania. A lot of these more Republican rural areas also were very big for Trump in 2016. And looking at 2012, the last time that Virginia was really seen as like a pure competitive toss-up state, Obama got 51.2% of the votes statewide. Mitt Romney got 47.3% of the votes statewide. And when you look at this map, this is what a really competitive election in Virginia is really going to look like. And this is what Glenn Youngkin's map pretty much looked like in 2021. Loudoun County was 51.5 to 47. It was a very, very close county back in 2012. Fairfax was 59.6 to 39.1. This was very, very close as well. And then Prince William right here, 57.3 to 41.3. At the time, this was seen as a, as a massive win for Obama in the northern D.C. suburbs. And that's with the margins getting much bigger in 2016 and 2020. And then in Richmond, it was 77.8 to 20.6, a big win for Obama. Chesterfield right here, 53.2 to 45.4. That was a win by Romney. Norfolk down here, 72 to 26.6, a win for Obama. Virginia Beach was 50.5 to 48. That was a win for Romney. I believe there's a statistic that if you took the D.C. suburbs out of Virginia, I think it was like Mitt Romney either won the state of Virginia or he tied the state of Virginia with President Obama, but the northern D.C. suburbs is what ended up giving Obama the win. That's why it's very, very important when you discuss Virginia and how the state is going to vote, you can't ignore the northern D.C. suburbs. This is where the, bigot, uh, the biggest like group of votes is going to come from on election night. It's going to come out of Loudoun, it's going to come out of Fairfax, and it's going to come out of Prince William. Depending on how these counties are looking, if they're looking any better than 2020, a, how much, what are the margins, but B, that would be a sign that maybe Trump is improving in the state. If Harris is running the same as Biden did in those counties percentage-wise, then uh, like he did in 2020, that's a good sign for Harris that she's well on her way to winning Virginia and probably by a big margin. So those are very, very important areas to watch as well. As for areas like Virginia Beach and Chesterfield, if Trump is winning these counties, that could be a sign he's doing well. But again, just winning this part of the state is not going to be enough if there aren't some improvements made in the northern D.C. suburb. Trump does not need to win these counties, not even close, but he needs to have better performing margins up here, similar to the Romney's 2012 numbers, to even really be competitive. Will that happen? That remains to be seen, but we're going to find out on election day. Now looking at the party vote, we're looking at the Republican side. In 2020, Donald Trump got 44%. 2016, Donald Trump got 44.4%. And in 2012, Mitt Romney got 47.3%. That led to an average vote across the last three elections of 45.2%, which is not as good as Mitt Romney's 47.3%, but better than Trump's 2016 44.4%. And I actually think that could be pretty accurate to what Trump gets in 2024. I conducted a range taking the highest total minus the lowest total, got a solution of 3.3, and then took that 3.3 and added it to the high end and the low end. And that got a range of 40.7%. Republican on the low end, 50.6 Republican on the high end. And what this says to me is that if Republicans absolutely had an amazing night, yes, in theory, Virginia is winnable. However, just 50.6, it would be really, really hard to imagine that happening when the low is also 40.7. It's more likely than not Republicans would come up short in Virginia than pull out a very, very close election, though in a perfect scenario, it does imply that mathematically it is possible. Not likely, but is possible. On the Democratic side, the Democrats start with 2020, Joe Biden got 54.1. 2016, Hillary Clinton got 49.8. And 2012, Barack Obama got 51.2. An average across the last three elections of 51.7%. And I also think this could be a very close number to what we see on election night for 2024. Once again, I conducted a range, taking the highest number, 54.1, minus the lowest number, 49.8. That got a low-end range of 45.5 and a high-end range of 58.4. And comparing the ranges of the Democrats and the Republicans, I think it very much makes sense for how this, the state of Virginia really looks at the presidential level, which is, yes, in theory, the Republicans could win the state of Virginia at the presidential level, 
But for that to happen, they need for everything to basically go their way and have nothing really not go their way. Whereas on the Democratic side, the Democratic floor at 45.5 is over or about five points or over from where the Republicans floor is. So the Democrats clearly start off with an advantage in the state of Virginia, and that likely would mean they will win. It also is worth noting the Democrats high end of 58.4 is about, what, eight points higher than the Republicans? So the Democrats not only have a higher floor than the Republicans in Virginia, they also have a higher ceiling. So again, yes, in theory, Republicans could win the state of Virginia, but it's more likely than not multiple times that Democrats will win the state of Virginia, just given the math of the situation. Is it impossible for the Republicans to win here? No. Is it likely? Also no. So I think it's more likely than not we're going to see Virginia go blue on election night. But again, if it's a close race, that may have other effects down ballot that shows the election may be going Trump's way. If Virginia is being won by Kamala Harris by the same margin Joe Biden won it in 2020, that could be a sign that maybe this election is a lot more close than some of the polls are showing right now, and Harris could also be in a good position to potentially win. So Virginia could be a very early sign as how things are going, but I'm not totally sure that Trump will be able to pull off an upset in the state of Virginia, just given its trend in recent years of becoming more of a likely Democratic state. So with that said, with my prediction for the state of Virginia and its 13 electoral votes in the 2024 presidential election, first things first is I'm predicting Kamala Harris to win the state of Virginia. That is my first prediction. The numbers in which she does it are a little bit more interesting. I think she will get 51.7% of the vote. Trump will get 45.2. Which when you look at it, again, Biden won the state by 10.1% in 2020. This time, Harris only wins it by 6.5%. I think Trump is able to improve his numbers here as a little bit of a boost due to the fact that Glenn Youngkin being the governor has give a little bit of a resurgence for the Republicans in Virginia. So I think Trump will do better than he did in 2016 and 2020 in the state of Virginia, but I don't think it'll be enough for him to win the state. Whereas Harris will do slightly worse than what Biden did in 2020, but does do better than Clinton and Obama from 2016 and 2012 margins-wise and percentage-wise, which would be more than enough for her to win the state in a likely margin. So with that, adding Virginia to Kamala Harris's column, right now Kamala Harris is 139 electoral votes. Donald Trump has 240 electoral votes after I filled in every single state in the map that I have in either red or blue, red for Trump, blue for Harris. Harris 139, Trump 240. I also wanted to note that I did fill in the District of Columbia, Washington, D.C. for Kamala Harris in this video. I was going back and forth on doing a deep dive for D.C. itself, but I mean, D.C. is going to vote with over 90% of the vote for Kamala Harris, so I'm not really sure there's really worth too much time really doing a video on D.C., especially with Election Day only two weeks away and I have all the other states to do left. So seeing as I was talking about the D.C. suburbs in this video, I felt it was appropriate just to add D.C. in the call into this video as well. So Virginia and D.C. both go for Kamala Harris in this video. So I'm just going to put it in here and then for future deep dives, D.C. will be filled in for Harris going forward. So with that, that's all I have on the deep dive for the into the state of Virginia. Please also now enjoy the sneak peek into my full 2024 election night prediction where I go over the state call at 7 p.m. and for the state of Virginia. We arrived at 7 o'clock on the East Coast and we are getting our first round of presidential poll closings of the night in the following states. The very important battleground state of Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, South Carolina, Vermont, and Virginia. And with that, the polls have officially closed and we can now make our first projections of the night. And lastly, in the state of Virginia and its 13 electoral votes, an interesting call here that we can call Virginia as too close to call. Too close to call in the state of Virginia. Virginia, a state that Joe Biden defeated Donald Trump by 10 points in 2020, we are calling and categorizing as too close to call due in large part due to the election of Governor Glenn Youngkin in 2021 and early promising polling and early voting numbers that are giving Republicans optimism in the state and hoping to be able to flip the state red. We're going to count all the votes and wait and see how Virginia will vote tonight.
That will do it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give it a like. And if you really liked it, please remember to click the subscribe button and make sure you turn post notifications on so you always get notified when I post a new video. That way you never miss one. Also, please remember to share this video with your friends and family if you really, really, really like the video. And remember to stay tuned because I'll be posting at least one video every single day leading up until election day. So I'd really appreciate it if you keep coming back and watching those videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in a future video.